everyone. Welcome to the June episode of Storytime with the Bookmobile. I'm Meg. I'm Brianna. And I'm Olivia. Um, we are super excited for our June episode because that means that it's almost summer. And summertime in Vermont, I don't know about you guys, but it's my favorite time of the year. Um, I'm so excited to actually be able to spend time outside, nice weather, sunshine. Um, what are your guys' favorite things to do in the sun in the summer? I like to go swimming, personally. I love being in the water. It's my favorite thing. Where do you go swimming? Um, I'll go in Lake Champlain a lot, you know, nice. and then I'll go sit on the beach and read. Awesome. What about you? Um, I like to do a lot of different things. I think just being outside is really fun. Um, going for walks and hikes and spending time in my backyard is really exciting. And you have a new backyard now, right? I do, yes. That's so exciting. I have a really wonderful backyard that I can hang out in all summer long. Perfect time for that. I really like gardening. I planted my garden yesterday um, and going for bike rides. I'll bike down actually to the lake and then jump in and go swimming. It's like one of my all-time favorite things to do. Um, so our book today is actually about spending time outdoors and it's written by a Vermont author. So um, some of the things that we're talking about being in the lake and such and the animals that live there are in our story today, which is really exciting. And we're going to be doing an outdoor themed craft using leaves that we found and singing some songs and telling some jokes about nature. So you guys ready to get started? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, always. <laughs> so we'll start with our summertime song, which is to the tune of The Farmer in the Dell. Ready? Okay. The sun is shining bright. The sun is shining bright. Oh, how I love the warmth. The sun is shining bright. The rain is falling down. The rain is falling down. Oh, how I love the sound. The rain is falling down. The flowers start to bloom. The flowers start to bloom. Oh, how I love the sight. The flowers start to bloom. Awesome, guys. That was perfect. I think yeah. that was our best song yet. Yeah, that was, we were harmonizing there a little bit, I think. Because I can't actually sing the tune. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. And I like that song a lot because Vermont definitely has the sunshine. We also get a lot of the rain, True. but I think it just makes us appreciate the nice weather and brings those beautiful flowers. True. Oh, so do you love flowers? Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was a good song for summertime in Vermont. And then we have some jokes about mm -hmm. the outdoors, Bree. Do. So, um, <clears throat> what did the big flower say to the little flower? I don't know. I have no idea. What's up, bud? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's cute. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a turtle in a porcupine? An unhappy mm. turtle. <laughs> <laughs> a frightened <laughs> turtle. <laughs> <laughs> a turtle with better weapons. No, um, a slow poke. Oh, nice. a slow poke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Puns. Where do otters keep their money? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, either. no, they don't have pockets. In the riverbank. Oh. That's cool. That is yeah. good. Those are great. <laughs> I think some of those animals are in our book today, too, so that's yeah. exciting. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be making leaf rubbings. Um, and so these are some leaves that we just collected outside of our office. Um, they're looking a little wilted after the ride here, but I think they'll still do. And so just for this craft, you'll need a piece of paper. You want it to be kind of thin so that you can see the leaves. I'm hoping this is thin enough. This is kind of all we had. Some crayons. And then pick the leaf that you want to use or multiple leaves, whatever you want. So I'm going to use some of these. This one looks pretty cool. These are really cool leaves. Thanks. I think a fun thing to do if you did this craft would be to maybe get a book of different trees and what their leaves look like. And I was thinking figure the same out thing. what kind of tree your leaf came from. I know, I wish I knew what these I were. I know, that would be really cool. Some of them look kind of like a maple leaf, but I don't think they actually are maple leaves. And so what you want to do is just put your leaf underneath your paper. If I can get it to sit nicely. And then use a crayon to gently rub over where the leaf is and it should make an imprint of the leaf design. Oh, 
Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And so you can do a bunch of different ones to make like a pattern. You can just make one really nice one. Use different colors. Bree is coloring furiously. She's got so excited. <laughs> You want to press down hard enough that you really get the imprint of all the different parts of the leaf, but not too hard that you kind of cover up the shape that it's making. Yeah, and you also want to make sure you're using like the side of the crayon, right? So it's yeah. Easier to do then you're not pressing down on the point. Yep. So Olivia, you said you like to go for walks and hikes. Where I do you do. like to hike? Um. Well, sometimes I like to hike mountains. Like I've done Camel's Hump a couple times, nice. um, and Mount Mansfield is always fun. But sometimes I like to just go for walks around around town. Nice. One this time on the very very top of Mount Mansfield, I saw a lady with four dachshunds. Oh my god! Four little sausage dogs, and they <laughs> walked up the whole mountain. It was incredible. Wow. Yeah. I was really impressed. One time at the top of Mount Philo, I saw a woman that had like three beautiful golden retrievers. Aww. They were so cute. But it's a little easier for a golden retriever to walk up a mountain. I know. I was like, <laughs> wow, if they can do it with their short little legs, yeah. I can definitely do it. <laughs> this would be a really cool craft to kind of like combine with going for a hike so you could Go hike, collect some things to rub, and then make a little craft to commemorate your hike. Oh, that would be awesome. You could also do this with like ferns and yeah. Um, My leaf looks a little fern, fern-like. It does. Oh, it does. Oh, it's pretty. Try a different one and see if it works as well. supposed to be like 80 degrees this week. I need to think of what I'm going to do with such beautiful weather. Ooh. Maybe you should go for a bike ride. I would love to. That is a really good idea. I'm trying to get better at riding my bike. <laughs> There's a beautiful bike ride um, in Burlington down to the causeway. That's what I like to do. Ooh. And I, would, I really want to do a, a bike trip where I maybe bike from Burlington all the way up to the islands or somewhere else up here. Oh, that would be fun. Take like a whole day and then maybe stay overnight and bike back. Summer is also a great time for camping trips. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to go camping. Me too. Do you guys have trips already planned or? I think Olivia and I are actually gonna go camping together in July. She's really excited. Yeah, we awesome. have some friends we're gonna go to uh, Burton Island actually. Oh, which fun. is pretty close to here. Yeah. And that should be really fun. Maybe the bookmobile can come. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if the bookmobile would fit on the ferry, but. Uh, <laughs> True. We could always, always try. try. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Little known fact the bookmobile can swim. <laughs> it's actually a houseboat, aquatic bookmobile. It's one of those duck boats. It turns into a book boat. <laughs> that would be cool. But I don't oh, Brie, really I like how you combined colors. That's yeah. really cool. It's feeling really fancy. Nice. These are so cool. If I had a marker, I think it would be cool maybe to like outline the leaves to make them oh, pop even more. Oh, that's what I was going to try to do with this crayon. Yeah. Maybe but I'll I bet that, that would too. look cool with a marker. I don't know if this is the one that I used. I think I used more of a purple. I'm just going to leave it as is. I don't want to mess up my beautiful artwork. <laughs> Oh, Brie even signed hers? I did. I'm going to sign mine. It makes it's, me feel like a famous artist. I yeah. think it's really important to sign your artwork. Cause, yeah. You know. Well, because that way, if I, you know, if I get really famous someday, they'll know that this was a Brianna original. <laughs> yeah, and you want to know when you made it? Yeah. What's today's date? It's the 14th today? 15th. 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 Oops, I'm a day behind. It's ready for the fridge. <laughs> All right, I think mine's all set too. 
Oh, I guess I should sign it. Should yeah, of course. We just talked about how important it is. I know. <laughs> um, awesome. And then we can show them to our adoring fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning my mom. <laughs> and my dad. <laughs> there we go. Awesome job. Yay. It's really easy, cool craft to do that gets you outside. It's perfect for the summer. So this month we're going to be reading Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes. Whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close, cucklery. Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes! It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster-fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. 
Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto the shore as a far off loon calls goodnight. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. in the hidden world under the pond. The end. That was an awesome story. Thank you so much for reading that to us, Olivia. No problem. Did you guys have a favorite part? Uh, yeah, I really liked where they the part where they showed the beaver diving really deep. I just think beavers are really cool animals because they have those huge tails that you know, they build the dams with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're pretty cute, too. Yeah. yeah. I liked the, especially the picture where they're looking up at the trees and you can kind of see them from way up above and um, there's a woodpecker. I thought that was just a really beautiful image. Yeah, that was a really cool yeah. illustration. Um, I think my favorite part was when they saw the painted turtle in the pond because yeah. I always like it on warm days when you go out and you can see them sunning themselves on the rocks. Yeah. It's really fun. Oh. oh, I was going to say that. I just love that it's a Vermont author. I was Kate just going to say the awesome. same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I also love this book was actually a gift someone bought for the bookmobile, which it makes was, it even more special. Yeah, it was yeah. a gift from a former Vista. Um, so basically the old Brianna and I, um, her name is Caitlin, <laughs> and we really appreciate the gifts yeah. that she sends us. Um, okay, so I think that does it for our show this month. Um, before we go, we do have one or two announcements about upcoming events for the Bookmobile. Yeah, on June 9th, there's going to be a free movie at the Swanton Library, so you should come watch it. It's part of our Vermont Reads um, grant, so we're going to be giving away free copies of Brown Girl Dreaming, which is an amazing book. So even if you don't want to see a movie, come pick up the book, because it's still really good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this week, um, and we'll see you next time. Yep. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.